hello in this video i'll be showing how you can easily edit a photo when it comes to photoshop and in this we are simply going to be learning how you can easily process your images how to smooth and skin in photoshop how to color grade and finally how to export or save your photos when it comes to photoshop simply like this video and don't forget to subscribe if you're truly watching and you're not yet subscribed yet to this channel and we're just going to proceed so in order to open up a raw image in photoshop locate the image or the photos that you want to edit simply right click and come to open with and select the photoshop version that you want to edit the image so this is a raw file so i'm just going to open up the raw file and it's going to automatically open in the camera raw filter and i'm using camera raw 17.0 and after doing that we have to first of all correct the lighting and contrast issues regarding this very image so i'll come to the highlights and take the highlights down to recover information in the highlight areas and i'll do the same for the whites to recover the white in the sky and i'll take the blacks down to add more contrast in the black areas then open up the shadows slightly then i'll increase on the contrast of this very image so after doing that the next thing is going to be working on uh, these colors or the colors in the image so i'm going to scroll down to these colors where we see hue saturation or the color mixer option and in this we're simply going to understand what hue saturation and luminance is all about so hue is changing a given color so you can change the reds to look like a color below it which is the magentas we can make the reds you can make the reds look like the oranges which is the color below it we can make the reds look like a magentas which is the color on top of it so that is how hue is going to be working saturation is the intensity of a given color you can increase on the intensity of the reds or you can reduce on the intensity of the reds Luminous is the brightness or darkness of a given color as you can see right there. So after understanding these basics, we are simply going to go straight into the hues. So we're going to plan with the hues. So with this, I'm just going to increase on the hues of the reds. Just like that. So that I can get the reds out of the model skin tone. So I just take it as the oranges. And after doing that, I'll simply come to the saturation. And simply increase on the saturation of the blues to make the blues pop a little bit more and after doing that I'll simply come to the luminous and darken the blues to make the blues pop a little bit more you can as well darken the reds if at all you wish to but I just want to darken the oranges to get more color within the skin tone so after doing that the next thing is going to be I'm just going to around with the hues of the blues because i just want the blues to lean more on the aqua side i feel like that is okay and it looks better so that's the before after before after so after doing this the next thing is going to be opening the image into photoshop for us to do the rest of the adjustments so you can as well play around with the hues here of the magentas to see what works best for you so i'm just going to leave that so just come and hit open to open the image into photoshop for us to do the final adjustments like skin retouching teeth whitening and finally how to save the photo so after doing this or after opening the image into photoshop the first thing you have to do is cropping the image so in order to crop the image when it comes to photoshop simply come and get the crop tool so click right there and select a ratio of 45 or 8 by 10 so for this i'm just going to I'll choose 4 by 5 or 8 by 10 and click on the image and drag up just like that so i'm just going to crop the image about there and i'll simply hit enter to crop the image so after cropping the image the next thing is going to be working on the skin or doing the skin smoothening so for skin smoothening basically we're going to be using frequency separation and as you know frequency separation is a skin retouching technique that is going to divide the image into the colors and the textures so just going to come to this very image or this layer and create two layers so press ctrl j on the keyboard twice to create those two layers double click this to rename it to low and you can double click on the name of layer one copy to rename it to high or you can name it the texture layer so after doing that the next thing is going to be coming to the high frequency layer and after selecting it simply hide it and select a low frequency layer then you're going to come and come to filter and come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. So click on an area on the skin. So look for that area that has more skin textures than the rest of the image. So for this case, 
I feel like this area has more skin textures. So left click on the radius slider and start taking up the radius. And you'll have to stop at the point whereby the textures or the details are just starting to disappear from the image. So for my case, I'm just going to be at around 5 that is when I'm just starting to close out on the textures within the skin. So 5 that is when I'm just starting to close out on the textures. So the image you're going to be working on is also going to be carrying different levels of details or textures. So you have to look at the image and analyze it and move a slider and stop at the point whereby you are just starting to lose out or to blur away the textures but you can still identify where the textures were initially. Click OK and now come and select the high frequency slider and now turn it back on and just come to image and come to apply image. So when it comes to apply image you can see that we are dealing with a 16 bit image. Come and select the low frequency layer and make sure the channel is set to RGB and make sure the blend mode for a 16 bit image is add. Type in 2 under scale and offset 1, offset 0. So for a 16 bit image, blending is add, the scale is to offset 0. Make sure opacity is 100%. Preserve transparency and mask can only check and simply turn on the invert option. And you'll see the textures on this gray layer. So if at all you're dealing with an 8 bit image, you're going to be using a blend mode of subtract. The scale has to be 2 and offset 128 and make sure you don't turn on the invert option and make sure the opacity is 100 percent preserve transparency and mask cannot check and simply click ok after doing or putting in those settings so we are dealing with a 16-bit image so i'm just going to revert the settings and come the blend mode right here and change it from normal and change it all the way down to linear light and after doing that put this two in a group by selecting them so press command and hold down and select both layers and drag them into this folder icon so open up the group and hide the high frequency layer and select the low frequency layer so we're going to come under the brushes right click and get the mixer brush tool and after selecting the mixer brush tool set it so select the mixer brush tool if at all you can't locate it under the brushes you can locate the mixer brush tool down here so we're going to come right here and make sure the hand is set to zero make sure you select clean brush then make sure you select the option that says clean the brush after each and each stroke. So the second option is selected. And the weight is 9%. Load 75. Mix at 90 and the flow of 100%. Make sure sample all layers is not turned on. And after doing that, we just want to blend or smoothen the skin using this brush tool. So remember, we have selected the color layer or the low frequency layer. So reduce on the size of the brush. And we just want to come and blend the transition so to zoom in you can use ctrl plus on the keyboard or you can use command plus on the keyboard so to blend the skin tone we are simply going to reduce on the size and make sure you don't zoom all the way in retouch at a distance so to blend the transitions between the skin tone we we'll use a small brush and how to blend we we'll left click and hold down and mix just like that the skin tones in a given area and left click and hold down and you drag to mix to blend the skin so that is how you can use the mixer brush tool so we are blending colors that are looking alike and if at all you want to work on another color you release the left click button and left click once again and hold down to blend a new area so that is how you can use the mixer brush tool so you can start blending the highlight alone and releasing to click once again so if at all the mixer brush tool is showing a plus icon make sure you Press the caps lock key on the keyboard to have the brush display the way it is meant to be in this such format. So just come and blend just like that. So don't mind if I thought the image is looking blurry. So blend every area that has skin or the skin tones. So just come and blend. And you always have to follow the direction of a given area so that you can you can keep and maintain the original shape of uh, the model's body so you can see i'm blending this highlight alone and i'm moving the brush in an up down direction to keep and maintain how light is falling onto the model's body or on the model's skin and in this way it won't be changing or distorting the original shape of the model's face so i'm just going to come and blend right on the hand right there and blend right there so just take your time as you're doing this so you can see that the more 
plastic the image is getting, the better the results at the end of the editing process. So you can see what we have right now. So when we come back and we turn on the texture or high frequency layer, you can see I'm just going to turn this on and off before, after, before, after we have been able to smoothen the skin and we have retained the original skin textures or details in the model skin. So how to remove the pimples or blemishes and skin imperfections from the model skin? We simply select the texture or high frequency layer and get the clone stamp tool and make sure the hardness is set to zero and make sure opacity is 100%, flat 100%, make sure line is selected and sample is set to current layer because we only want to remove the pimples that are part of the textures in this image. So you can zoom in by using Ctrl plus on the keyboard or you can use Command plus on the keyboard. So to, to remove pimples or blemish, you can reduce on the side by using the box brackets on the keyboard. And to remove this pimple, you can hold down the Option key on the keyboard for Windows to use alternate and left click on a clean area near the blemish and simply left click once again after releasing the alternate key on the keyboard and to replace the blemish or pimple with clean skin. So once again, alternate or you can use the Option key and left click on a clean area near the pimple and release the alternate key on the keyboard or the option key on the keyboard and left click over the blemish to replace that pimple or blemish with clean skin that you copied uh, previously. So that is how you can remove pimples or skin blemishes using the clone stamp tool and frequency separation. So I'm just going to remove and clean up these pimples and blemishes from the skin. So after cleaning up the pimples or blemishes, you can see what we have been able to achieve before, after, before, after. You have been able to smoothen out the skin for this model. So after doing this, the next thing is going to be doing a simple color grading process on this very image. So you're just going to come right here to adjustments and come and create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. You're simply going to come to the mask and simply select the reds and come to the lightness and take the reds just down to reduce on the yellow color on the model skin. You can see before, after. So I'm going to come to the adjustments and simply come to black and white and change the blend mode from normal and change it to multiply and come the opacity right here. Click the drop down arrow and take down the opacity. So I'm just going to leave it at around 9. 9 is okay. So by just doing this, I've been able to reduce on the saturation saturated skin tones or the over saturated skin tones so we're going to come and do a little bit of eye and teeth whitening to the model's eyes and teeth so just come the adjustments and create a hue and saturation adjustment layer and after doing that simply come to the master and simply make sure master is selected take the saturation all the way down to around negative 74 then make sure the white layer mask is selected and press ctrl i or you can use command i on the keyboard to invert the effect Zoom in to the image by using Ctrl plus on the keyboard or you can use Command plus on the keyboard. Right click on the brushes and select the brush tool. Make sure the hardness is set to zero and soft round brush is selected. So make sure the opacity and the flow is 100%. And after doing that, make sure you have black and white on these two color swatches. Or you can reset by pressing D on the keyboard to reset it to default. So with white as a foreground color, you can use this arrow key. Use the white brush and reduce on the size and simply paint on the teeth. So just be careful and only paint on the teeth. So if I told you make a mistake, you can as well eliminate that mistake by switching the brush back to white and white is going to erase the effect from a given area. So white is going to erase the effect that you may have painted accidentally. So to undo, you can press Ctrl Z or you can use Command Z on the keyboard. So I'm just going to switch the brush back to white and paint the whitening effect once again. So right now we have been able to whiten eyes and teeth and also retouch this very image. So the next thing is going to be saving the image so that it doesn't change in color when we post it or print it out. So just come right here to File, come to Export and come to Export As. And it's going to open up the Export As dialog box right here in Photoshop. Make sure the format is set to JPEG and make sure the quality is to the maximum which is seven for my case make sure the sample is set by cubic sharper because we want a very sharp image as we are saving it and make sure these two options convert srgb and also embed color profile have been checked and simply 
hit export and choose where you want to save the image that you have been able to edit so this is how you can easily edit or retouch a photo in photoshop from the very start to the very end and if at all you have enjoyed this simply like this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if at all you have been watching and you are not yet subscribed to this channel Ronix from Ronix Photography thank you for watching and see you need more videos on this channel and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating